So with that organization, you find a high level of pedophile. They have a lot of trouble with keeping their hands, the men keeping their hands off of little kids. And that being the reason. Man wasn't supposed to be that. God created man with a purpose in mind. I'm not dealing with that today. But he said you ought to be fruitful and to multiply. The only way you can be fruitful and to multiply is for a man and a woman to come together under the cover of the marriage and bring forth children. Priests also were allowed to get married. Aaron had sons because Aaron had a wife. And him and his wife multiplied. They were fruitful unto the Lord. But when you go contrary to God's word, again, there are consequences. He said they're going to be forbidden to marry and commanded to do what? And commanded to abstain from meat. It's like on Good Friday, you're not supposed to eat no meat, but they, sometimes they say, well, you can eat fish, like fish is not a meat. God never told you that. He told us what it is that we can and cannot eat. The only time we have to abstain from eating anything is on the Day of Atonement. Because God commanded us to do that. But they're going to come along, forbidden to marry, commanded to abstain from meats, which God what? Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And know the truth according to his word. But go ahead. For every creature of God is good. But it's not to be eaten. Everything that God created, he created for a purpose. But he didn't create everything to be eaten. It's all that simple. He said, for every creature of God is good, and nothing what? And nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Because what has he done? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. He said, he's set apart by the word of God. He said, and, and prayer. But then some people will take this and twist it and say, see, all you got to do is pray over it. God is not going to hear the prayers of those who are intentionally doing wrong. What kind of sense does that make? The Lord says that this type, this animal is a, an abomination, the swine, the pig, and then you're going to eat it and then turn around and before you eat it, pray unto the Lord for him to bless it. Can't do that. He's already set that apart for what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to dispose of the garbage. You weren't supposed to eat that. That's not meant for man to eat. It is an abomination unto the Lord. So praying that God will do no one any good. That prayer is going to fall on the deaf ears. That's just like now they're trying to sanction the unions between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. Cannot happen. God will never sanction that because he said be fruitful and multiply. You cannot be fruitful and multiply. What's called an alternative lifestyle is just that. It is an alternative to life. Because if you take that situation, guarantee, put him on an island somewhere, come back and say 200 years, all be wiped out. It's unnatural. It goes against, you don't have to be spiritually profound to understand. It goes against nature itself. Because if you cannot reproduce, what does that mean? You will eventually become extinct. That's contrary to God. But again, Paul warned us of all of man's tradition not to give heed to it, not to fall prey to it. But he said in the latter day, many are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Instructions of how to serve God that are totally contrary to him. Turn over to John, the sixth chapter. Because you got to do away with all of that leaven, all of the hypocrisy, all of the doctrines, the false doctrine. You ask an average Christian, what it is that they want to do, and they will tell you, I just want to go to heaven. That is a doctrine that cannot be substantiated by the word of God. No kind of way. But yet and still, the majority of Christians, that's what they believe, that is what they desire. Why is that?
because they've not read the word of God, they've not paid heed to the warning. God himself said, many going to come in my name and going to deceive many, many false prophets. So you got people seeking to serve the Lord, some of them in earnest, but because they refuse to read the Bible, because they refuse to open their mind into the Lord, because they refuse to pray to him, to ask for understanding. They are led astray. I know myself was one. Call myself trying to serve God. Ain't had a clue what thus say the Lord. None whatsoever. And then when you look back with hindsight, you realize that the guy that's standing up there, the so-called pastor, they're making it up as they go. You can't find none of it in the word of God. But John 6, in verse number 38, because we're going to find what it is. What is this unleavened bread that we're supposed to consume? As Paul said, keep this feast with the bread of sincerity and truth. And the truth that he's talking about, we're going to see, is the word of God. 6 and verse number 38. Go ahead when you get there. Because after the Passover, you have the feast of unleavened bread. You got to eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. What? That of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. Uh -huh. I should raise it up again at the last day. So Jesus said he came down and he is our example. As a Christian, you are supposed to have to be Christ-like. And to be Christ-like, we, if we are to do like he did, we have to submit our will to that of God. He said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And he was sent what? He was sent to die for the sins of the world. Again, as it was predetermined before the foundation of the world. He said, and this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But what is he going to do? He said, I'm going to raise it up again at the last day. Go ahead. And this is the will of him that sent me. Uh -huh. And everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him what? may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. He said, and again, this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I'm going to raise him up again at the last day. Drop down to verse number 44. Go ahead. Because he's going to tell us again, not once, not twice. When he's going to bring his servants up, not soon as they die, but what? Verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Uh-huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. And we're going to look at this last day again, this seventh day, when the Lord sets up his kingdom here on this earth. He said, no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I'm going to raise him up at the last day. Verse 51, and go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. This is the unleavened bread that we have to consume. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, what? He shall live forever. He's going to obtain eternal life. If you consume this bread, and the bread that he's talking about, we're going to find is simply the word of God. If you adhere to the commandments of God, then you are going to live forever. Because even if you perish, even if you give up your last breath and die, God is simply going to raise you from the dead as he did Jesus. That's what is the promise that he's made unto us. He said, I am the bread of life. I'm sorry, he said, I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he is going to live forever. The only thing that will cause you to live to forever is the word of God. It's to hear it, hearken unto it. And with all your strength, all your might, be obedient unto God's word. And that's going to lead unto your salvation. Go ahead. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Again. Go ahead. Which I will give for the life of the world. Talking about the sacrifice of his body. Talking about his death. Drop down to verse number 54. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood uh -huh. hath eternal life. And what is he going to do? And I will raise him up in the last. He said, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He's not talking about cannibalism. 
What he's talking about, you got to consume his words. You first and foremost have to learn about the true and living God. You got to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Come up under his blood. Be willing to, to, to live your life as a servant unto the Lord. And he's letting you know if you do that, that's going to lead to eternal life. Because even if you die, the Lord is just going to simply raise you from the dead. And we're going to see that. But drop down to verse number 63. Because he said, Whoso eating my flesh and drinking my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And Jesus is using the physical to show the spiritual. And they had a problem with that. They didn't understand. He wasn't talking about literally drinking his blood. He wasn't talking about literally eating the eating of his flesh. Because even if that happened, that would have only benefited those that were there. That's not what he's talking about. He's going to let it be known. Verse 63, go ahead. It is the spirit that quickens. What? The flesh profited nothing. He said that's what gives life. He said it is the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that gives life. And he's going to tell us what this spirit is that he's referring to that gives life. He said, even though my flesh is not going to profit you. He said, it is the spirit that gives life. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, what? they are spirit uh -huh. and they are life. That's the spirit that will give you life. That's the word of God. That's the unleavened bread that you got to consume. And it will lead into eternal life, everlasting life. Only if you are willing to adhere to it. Only if you are willing to obey it. It means nothing to be able to quote this by. Other than the fact you have a good memory. You have false prophets can quote the Bible backwards and forwards. But then won't do anything what does say the Lord. Hypocrisy is an offense unto God. You have to hear this word. You have to. Believe it. And you have to evidence that belief through your actions, through your obedience, and that is a show of your faith. And it is your faith that will lead to your deliverance. But turn over to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Because we had the Passover, which was pointing to none other than Jesus. Pointing to when he was going to come and die at the Passover lamb, sacrificing his blood, shedding his blood for the forgiveness or the remission of our sin. You come up under Jesus' blood, and then you have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You're to get rid of all that which is contrary to the Lord, and you are supposed to eat unleavened bread for seven days, and unleavened bread simply represents the Word of God. We turn over to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Because in doing away with God's holy days in favor of man's holidays, man has done away with their understanding of God's plan of salvation. But Leviticus 23, because we're going to look at some more of God's holy days. 23, and pick it up at verse number 9. 23 and 9. You go ahead when you get there. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And again, who's talking? The Lord. Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. And ye be come into the land which I give unto you. What? And shall reap the harvest thereof. Then what were they to do? Then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And again, this was pointing to none other than Jesus. See, he told them when they came in the land that the Lord was going to give them, talking about the promised land. And you reap the harvest thereof. You bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and what is he going to do? And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord. Go ahead. And accept it for you. When? On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave. Talking about the first day of the week, he said, after the weekly Sabbath, the priest is going to do this. He's going to wave it. The sheep of the first fruits had to be gathered before that time, did it not? In order for him to do that. But go ahead. First. Pardon me. Drop down to verse number 15. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Because what the Lord is getting ready to do now, he's going to get him some more first fruits. 